Welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will be looking at the histogram command. Histograms are a common and useful way to process data, especially from probability distributions. This video will cover calculating and displaying histograms with the new histogram command, as well as the older hist command. If you like this content and want to see more of it, consider subscribing to this channel where we do new data science and programming content every week or two. Let's begin by generating a bit of fake data and then making a default histogram with it. We're using the randn command, requesting 10,000 columns of data and then scaling it by 100 to increase the standard deviation a bit wider. This gives us a fair amount of data to work with in a normal distribution. Next, we create a figure and use the histogram command on the data. This is using all of the defaults, so we just pass the data as an argument and as you can see, we get a nice resulting histogram. This command was introduced in MATLAB 2014, and before that you needed to use the hist command. Comparing the two, you can see that we get slightly nicer plotting out of the new command, but the differences are actually quite a bit deeper. Let's play with this a little more. If we specify an argument, we can indicate how many bins we want. As you can see, we're going to use 100 bins here. I can increase it to have 200 bins as well, seen here. Or, if we specify a vector instead of a scalar, we can control the edges of the histogram, which is useful if you want to control the exact spacing. Notice that the first and last bins have unusual behavior. If we specify the edges, data is removed from the histogram. Anything outside of the histogram range is simply deleted from the plot. Let's compare this behavior to the old hist command. Here we specified the centers instead of the edges. The result is that the last bins are almost unusable for widely spread out data. The center versus edge specification is a bit subtle, so be careful if you're converting code. Next, we are going to look at how to get the calculated histogram values out. In the old hist command, this was actually really straightforward. They were returned from the function call. Here, n and x are the counts and bin centers of the histogram. This was probably the most frustrating part of the old command plotting and calculating were tied together, and the plotting was only so-so in quality. As you can see, when we do this calculation, we don't actually get any plot. We just get the values out. In practice, if you wanted to do nice plotting, you would actually use a second command, shown here, the bar command. And this created a bar chart figure. As you can see, this is actually a much nicer plot than the default histogram plot, or I should say hist plot, uh, and it's especially useful that it's customizable, whereas the default hist plot is not really customizable in a nice way. The new system of using histogram fixes this. Let's start by creating a new histogram, again with some bidden edges specified, and then assign it to a variable myHist. What is myHist? Remember before that hist returned the bins uh, and the counts. But the histogram command actually returns a histogram object. This object can do calculations and plotting for us, and that's much, much easier to use. I guess I would call it a more coherent design strategy because uh, we don't have to decouple plotting from uh, bin calculation. So let's take a look at this histogram object. Let's try a command more bins, shown here. You can see that we get more bins plotted as well as more bins calculated in the back end if we go looking for the bin data. Likewise, we can do fewer bins and again see the plot update. We can do this as many times as we want, just instructing the histogram object to have more bins or fewer bins depending on what we need. We can also do useful calculations like normalization with the object. So instead of plotting the counts per bin, let's plot the PDF, the probability distribution function. Here you can see the y-axis of the plot has been updated for us. We can switch it back exactly the same way using the count normalization. This is useful for a ton of reasons, but especially when you want to plot different bin spacings for two different histograms on the same plot at the same time. By choosing the right normalization, you can make them comparable as opposed to uh, sometimes very misleading. When comparing histograms, it's especially important that you pay attention to your normalization or you can make severe conceptual errors. Next, let's look at how to get the bin centers and values out of the histogram. There's actually a lot of ways to do this, but the one I prefer is to calculate the centers from the edges. 
we use the bin edges field from the myHist object shown here. By averaging edges to each side of each bin, we get the centers correct even if the spacing between the bins changes. Getting the values per bin is actually really easy now, just use the values field from the object. If we use hold on, we can actually plot the values and centers as a line over top the histogram shown here. We also have all of those nice modifications the bar object uh, was required for before, like changing the histogram plotting. We can change, for example, the color of the histogram or the lines uh, surrounding each bar plot. In this video, we've looked at both new and old plotting and calculating of histograms and explored some of the cool features of the histogram object. If you like this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out. If you have suggestions for future videos or questions about this one, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.